What would happen if a nuclear weapon hit the US? Fears of a nuclear attack have been in the public consciousness since 1945, when the US military dropped two atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In the years following these strikes, the United States and Western Europe entered into the Cold War, which would last all the way up until the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991. Until that time, American and international moviegoers were treated to sci-fi films about how nuclear fallout could either awaken ancient beasts, as in the case of the 1954 film Godzilla, or turn everyday ants into deadly killers, such as in Them, also from 1954. Nuclear fears were not just at the movies either. School children in the US were taught to duck and cover by a turtle named Bert. Bert told his viewers to take shelter under their school desks in order to survive a nuclear attack. Such advice would obviously not save anybody. Nowadays, the old nuclear fears of the Cold War have been revived thanks to the rhetoric of North Korea and its dictator Kim Jong-un. Although the communist state in Pyongyang has long threatened its neighbors with nuclear strikes, the uptick in ballistic missile testing by Kim Jong-un, as well as the equally forceful response to these tests by US President Donald Trump, has caused panic to spread among large segments of the American population. In January of 2018, apocalyptic fears were almost realized when a disgruntled government worker in Hawaii reportedly sent out a false warning of an impeding nuclear strike. For a brief moment, television viewers were treated to image of what severe public panic would look like right before a nuclear attack. So, considering all of this, what would an actual nuclear strike look like? How would the fallout be handled? And what would the social and health repercussions be for those in the blast zone or nearby? Well, the events of 1945 provide an excellent resource. On August 6, 1945, a US B-29 Superfortress bomber named the Enola Gay dropped Little Boy, the world's first atomic bomb, on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. The initial blast of the bomb wiped out about 90% of the city and killed approximately 80,000 people. A mere three days later, another B-29, this one named Boxcar, dropped the world's second atomic bomb, Fat Man, on the city of Nagasaki. Approximately 40,000 people died in this strike. In both instances, radiation, both initial and residual, caused numerous cases of cancer in the afflicted populations. As late as the 1960s, residents of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were still suffering from what many scientists suspect were the results of the atomic bomb strikes. Years later, in 1986, a flawed reactor system at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Pripyat in the Ukraine SSR caused a full 5% of the radioactive material from the plant's core to be released into the atmosphere. In total, 31 people would die in the immediate wake of the disaster, with many more eventual indirect deaths suspected due to radiation exposure. And to this day, there are stories and reports about misshapen plants and mutilated wildlife in and around the grounds of Chernobyl. In 2011, after an earthquake triggered a tsunami in Japan, the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant suffered a nuclear meltdown that caused high levels of radiation to infect the local air supply and water supply. In 2018, almost seven years after the disaster, scientists and environmental activists still report that Fukushima contains above average levels of radiation. So given all these examples, one can safely say that a nuclear strike on America would immediately kill many people. If a missile landed in a dense urban area, it could theoretically kill thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. A smaller nuclear bomb would disperse radiation from the clouds within an hour or a few hours. Larger bombs may take weeks to fully disperse all radiation into the atmosphere. Radiation exposure has been linked to cancerous growths and other health problems, most of which can be lethal. Those not affected by the initial blast would almost certainly be exposed to high levels of radiation. Fallout material would likely enter into the majority of the affected area's food supply. Extra strong gamma rays in the air and in the food would damage human cells. Prolonged suffering or death would be the result. 
On the financial side of things, the cleanup required after a nuclear attack could cost over a billion dollars and take years to complete. If a foreign country used a nuclear weapon on the United States, then Washington DC would likely declare a state of war. In the specific case of North Korea, a war there is projected to be short and swift, but incredibly deadly. Although North Korea by itself could never defeat a military coalition made up of the United States, Japan, and South Korea, it could cause thousands of civilian and military casualties. Seoul, the largest city in South Korea, is only 35 miles from the North Korean border. North Korea's conventional non-nuclear artillery could easily attack Seoul, thus putting over 10 million lives in danger. A war with North Korea also brings up the specter of the Korean War, which lasted from 1950 until 1953. In that conflict, the timely intervention of the Chinese army kept the US and the United Nations from toppling the communist state in Pyongyang. Despite a decline in relations starting in 2017, China remains North Korea's biggest ally and would not like to see a united and democratic Korea on its northern border. A more terrifying possibility is a terror attack using a nuclear weapon. In the world today, there are approximately 22,000 nuclear weapons. A large portion of these weapons is in Russia and the former Soviet republics of Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. Uzbekistan is home to the Islamic movement of Uzbekistan, which has carried out deadly terror attacks in Pakistan and against US military personnel in Afghanistan. The Islamic State, better known as ISIS, has also expanded into Central Asia, especially Uzbekistan. Other possible trouble spots are the restive regions of Chechnya and Dagestan. Here, jihadi militants continue to battle the forces of the Russian state. Given that highly enriched uranium HEU has been found in the Republic of Georgia, which has often acted as a retreat for Chechnyan and other Caucasian militants, it is not beyond the realm of possibility that one of these terrorist groups could get their hands on nuclear weapons or the material needed for making nuclear weapons. Finally, there is also the nuclear threat of Iran. Although far more dangerous to Israel than the United States, Iran's nuclear program, which the government in Tehran claims is for peaceful purposes only, makes the threat of a nuclear terror attack possible. After all, the US Department of Defense has labeled Iran as the world's number one state sponsor of terrorism, and Hezbollah, Iran's proxy army in Lebanon, has acquired vast sums of money and the latest in military technology thanks to their war efforts on behalf of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Hezbollah terrorists have been responsible for the deaths of hundreds of American citizens since the 1980s, and the group is particularly active in South America, where they allegedly trade cash for drugs and weapons. In order to protect America from a conventional nuclear attack, the government relies on a ground-based mid-course defense system, or GMD. This series of 36 interceptors and sensors has been designed to intercept and safely detonate any nuclear missile coming from North Korea or Iran. The GMD system is not capable of bringing down more sophisticated missile systems, including those currently used by the Russian and Chinese militaries. On May 30th, 2017, right in the middle of the growing hysteria over North Korea's nuclear weapons program, the GMD system successfully shot down a simulated ICBM, or intercontinental ballistic missile. ICBMs form the bulk of North Korea's arsenal, and this successful test which was carried out at California's Vandenberg Air Force Base seemed to put a lot of fears to rest. Unfortunately, a year earlier, the Government Accountability Office found that America's GMD system has not demonstrated through flight testing that it can defend the US homeland against the current missile defense threat. The Union of Concerned Scientists has also said that the 18 tests of the GMD are meaningless because they have been performed under artificial conditions. Even despite this, the GMD failed either 8 or 9 of these tests since 1999. This pass-fail ratio is not comforting for those worried about a nuclear attack. Indeed, it appears that America's frontline defense against a nuclear attack can best be described as only partially reliable. No one can say for sure that the GMD system would keep the American homeland safe during a nuclear assault from North Korea or any other power. 